Hello once again and thanks for joining us for Monday's edition of Alaska Weather, 25th day of April 2022. I'm David Percy. Uh, first graphic we've got is the hazardous weather graphic and there are no watches, advisories, or warnings out for mainland Alaska from the Arctic coast of the Gulf of Alaska or the Panhandle and also the uh, Kodiak Island area Gulf all looking good. No watches, warnings, advisories out there as well as the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. Nothing reaching even advisory criteria in the immediate forecast. Moving on to satellite imagery, you can see a washing out frontal system along that's extending from the northern Bering Sea from northwest to southeast there along the southwest coast and across the Alaska Peninsula, bringing a little bit of moisture with it uh, with some uh, but light amounts, only, let's see, five hundredths of an inch at St. Paul Island during the day today. Cold Bay picked up only two hundredths of an inch with uh, just uh, light amounts for the eastern Aleutians. Another band of showers brought a little bit of light rain to the Adak Atka area. Winds much lighter than they were when the front moved through earlier. They had gusts 45 miles an hour over the Aleutians, but that's weakened considerably now. Now at best like 25, maybe 30 miles an hour along the southwest coast there in the more exposed areas. Otherwise, uh, clouds uh, kept showers, especially over the southern panhandle today with uh, amounts ranging from uh, one to two tenths of an inch or actually five to fifteen hundredths of an inch over the central and southern southeast coast from uh, Petersburg southward to Ketchikan. Both areas they're picking up uh, about fifteen hundredths of an inch there. Otherwise lighter amounts elsewhere. Just mostly cloudy up to the north with some sunshine. South central Alaska into the Copper River Basin today. There was some uh, that week low south of the Alaska Peninsula did bring some uh, shower activity into the southern Cook Inlet area with Homer Seldovia picking up about a uh, tenth of an inch of precipitation in the last 12 hours and that extended across the southern Cook Inland to Iliam as well with showers over the western Alaska range and uh, precipitation extended as far north as Soldatna uh, mid-morning they had a light rain shower bringing them about one one hundredth of an inch of rain then it cuts off and sunshine northern Cook Inlet Anchorage up into Butte and the Manuska to sit in the valley temperatures rising into the mid-fifties by mid-afternoon up to the north mostly sunny skies up over the interior there greater Fairbanks area on up into the Yukon Flats temperatures uh, pushing 60 degrees at mid-afternoon or reaching 60 degrees at mid-afternoon at uh, Chalkitsik and Beaver then to the lower 50s throughout much of the Tanana Valley areas some cases mid to upper 50s dry conditions all the way out to the Arctic coast and maybe a little bit of flurry conditions on the eastern Arctic coast with some low clouds and fog and then light precipitation just reaching the coastline with that uh, front washing out. And we'll see tonight another big storm pushes in up from the southwest there toward the western Aleutians bringing uh, good gale force winds. That, that gradient look like, looks like it could support 45 knots south-southeast winds there uh, ahead of that frontal boundary. That will be pushing into Adak late tonight and wet windy conditions all the way back to Shimmy and Attu. But high pressure with uh, light winds and dry conditions, they'll slide on into the eastern Aleutians and the Pribilofs as that front continues to weaken and remain off the coast. They'll keep light rain and snow going over the Alaska Peninsula, possibly Nunavak Island, but amounts will be quite light there and winds not a factor at all anywhere over mainland Alaska, as well as the Gulf or even the Panhandle. Look for showers to linger over the southeast coast in areas as well as over the mountainous terrain, mostly during the evening hours of the Alaska Range and possibly the Talkeetnas, mountainous terrain of the Kenai Peninsula, but amounts will be quite light with uh, dry conditions over mainland Alaska. Still a risk of some flurries for the eastern Arctic coast and a risk of some clearing for the western Arctic coast and North Slope. And for Tuesday, dry conditions, western interior and the eastern Bering Sea with uh, Fair amount of sunshine from the western Arctic coast right on down into Bristol Bay. The Alaska Peninsula looks dry with that uh, frontal boundary gone now as the next front pushes eastward and weakens. 
with rain sliding into the eastern Aleutians and pushing in across the Pribilof Islands late in the afternoon. Winds uh, not too bad, uh, maybe up to 20 knots, 25 knots possibly for Unimak Island and uh, likely some gale force winds around that 982 millibar low for the western Aleutian southwest Bering Sea. Weak low pressure in the Gulf of Alaska keeps the risk of a shower for the North Gulf Coast. Copper River Basin, mostly cloudy, variably cloudy with a chance of snow showers over the eastern interior of the state all the way up to the eastern Arctic coast, as well as uh, the Panhandle chance of showers once again. And then for Wednesday, it looks like it'll be mostly dry for the southeast coast with a risk of a shower over the southern areas and along the coast, but nothing uh, significant or heavy with a better chance of seeing some sun breaks in the afternoon. Definitely sunny Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, and across Yukon, Kuskokwim Delta. Central interior, though, a couple of weak troughs bring uh, more clouds and a better chance of some shower activity into the central part of the state, mostly from the Alaska Range northward. South central Alaska basically dry with some sun breaks, although a risk of some afternoon showers over the mountains of the Kenai Peninsula, Chugach Mountains, Talkeetnas, and those areas. Chance of light snow, flurries for the uh, eastern Arctic coast, or for the entire Arctic coast there. Mostly dry with some sunshine for the Noatak Valley in the Western Brooks Range and the Northern Bering Sea looking pretty good. Sunshine, St. Lawrence Island, light winds on down along Bristol Bay to Kodiak Island as I mentioned. We can in front uh, periods of light rain slide up into the Alaska Peninsula and extend back to the uh, eastern Aleutians becoming showery over the remainder of the Aleutian chain. Westerly winds maybe 15 to 25 miles an hour. And looking at low temperatures for tonight, single numbers, Arctic Coast North Slope, teens to lower 20s for the Brooks Range, south of the mountains, upper 20s to lower 30s, with lower 30s, some upper 20s for the southwest interior out to the coastline, lower 30s staying above freezing for the Pribilofs, and mid to upper 30s for the Aleutians, mid 30s for the Alaska Peninsula, upper 20s and lower 30s for Bristol Bay, south central Alaska, low forecast for uh, Palmer Anchorage, 39 degrees and uh, lows in the uh, mid-30s for the Kenai Peninsula and down to about 30 for the Copper River Basin in, in the higher valleys there and in the upper 30s for the southeast coast and upper 20s lower 30s for the uh, Tanana Valley. Highs tomorrow, upper 40s to lower 50s in the central interior, especially along the uh, yukon Kuskokwim River right out to the southwest coast. A little cooler along the coast, mid to upper 30s there to near 40. Lower 30s, St. Lawrence Island, upper 30s for the Pribilofs, and upper 30s to mid 40s for the Aleutians. And Alaska Peninsula, all in the mid 40s, upper 40s, Bristol Bay, near 50 for Kodiak Island. So Sitna Valley again, highs 50 to 55. Manuska Valley, the same thing in the inland areas of the Kenai Peninsula, uh, Broadview, Cooper Landing area, and uh, on down towards Soldotna, but cooler out toward Kenai and Nikiski. Upper 40s for Homer Seldovia, near 50 for the Copper River Basin and uh, upper 40s to lower 50s for the Panhandle. And Wednesday morning low is about the same, pushing down towards zero but not quite making it along the Arctic coast and into the North Slope. In mid 20s to lower 30s for the Brooks Range and right around the freeze point there south of the Brooks Range along the Yukon River into the Flats, Fairbanks, and the northern Susitna Valley. Lower to mid 30s for the Kenai Peninsula. Lower 30s all the way out to the southwest coast in Bristol Bay. And in the 30s for the Aleutians mid to upper and upper 30s for the southeast coastal areas. And then the highs for Wednesday afternoon, 10 to 15 Arctic coast and call it 15 to 20 for the North Slope, 25 to 35 through the Brooks Range and Bettles, Fort Yukon, both in the mid 40s, 45 to 52 for the central interior and the Tanana Fairbanks area. Otherwise, uh, 50 to 55 again, so sit in the Manuska Valley, Kenai Peninsula, cooler out along the inlet coastline near 50 for Homer, lower 50s for Kodiak Island, and uh, kind of a range there for the Panhandle, lower 40s for Sitka and Mount Edgecombe, otherwise lower 50s elsewhere, upper 30s for the Pribilofs, near 30 for St. Lawrence Island, 25 to 35 across the uh, Seward Peninsula with Sishmaref at 26, Nome at 35, and lower 40s for the Central and Western Aleutians, lower to mid 40s there for the Alaska Peninsula, Look for uh, 50 to 55 for the highs across Kodiak Island there with uh, upper 40s to lower 50s there for South Central Alaska. And zooming in on the lows for tonight again, not too bad. Again, staying well above freezing for most of South Central Alaska down near the Frost Point and this is Sitna Valley and Copper. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. 
Flying weather, we're starting the day out with uh, areas of IFR, areas of marginal VFR, and some scattered areas of VFR across the interior of Alaska. Same thing out over the Bering Sea, mostly IFR from along the Aleutians and up over the western and northern Bering Sea. And another band there with that frontal boundary extending from northwest to southeast from St. Matthew Island to the Alaska Peninsula. And an area of IFR in over the Panhandle, another one over the Gulf of Alaska. And for the uh, afternoon conditions improve some uh, VFR over the interior with scattered areas of marginal VFR mostly VFR southern Alaska from Bristol Bay to the Copper River Basin some possible areas of IFR up along the Brooks Range to the western Arctic coast and areas of IFR of course out over the Bering Sea with some marginal VFR and probably some isolated areas of VFR as well and mar mostly marginal for the Panhandle VFR, Kodiak Island, Kenai Peninsula, Cook Inlet, Manuska, Sitna Valley, Copper River Basin, and Bristol Bay. And for Wednesday morning, areas of marginal VFR, interior Alaska, areas of IFR, north slope in the Arctic coast, and uh, pretty good area of IFR, uh, kind of a broad brush out there over the Bering Sea, covering just about all of the Bering Sea down into the Aleutians, and then pick up some marginal VFR toward Bristol Bay. And uh, marginal VFR with some VFR, interior Alaska, especially south of the Alaska Range there for Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak Island stays VFR, and uh, socked in IFR for the panhandle that gives way to marginal VFR in the afternoon for Wednesday. <clears throat> interior Alaska, VFR with some scattered areas of marginal VFR around, especially the mountainous terrain, central interior, and the Arctic coast could see some marginal VFR in areas up there with a lot of IFR again out over the Bering Sea, Pribilof Island, St. Matthew Island, and marginal VFR with some areas of VFR for the Aleutians, and then mostly VFR, Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay areas. And for passes, Anatuvik, occasionally marginal tomorrow, especially in the morning hours, and then mostly VFR in the afternoon. That same forecast good for Adigan as well. So moving on down to the Western Alaska Range passes, we've got uh, VFR. Lake Clark and Merrill, rainy, possibly marginal at times, otherwise VFR. Windy, VFR. Isabel, possibly marginal, otherwise VFR at other times. And Mintasta, VFR. And for Tanita, marginal VFR, possibly VFR at times. And for Portage, VFR. Chilkoot and White, mostly marginal at uh, best. And for the freezing levels, about 2,000 feet in over interior Alaska, 4,000 feet down along the central and south coast of the Panhandle. And then ahead of the uh, storm coming into the western Bering Sea, we got southerly winds pushing 6 to 8,000 foot freezing levels in over the central Aleutians with 2,000 feet all the way up to uh, about the latitude of St. Matthew Island. And from there, taking a look at icing. Some uh, mixed icing, 6 to 12,000 feet central interior there, Tanaha Valley into the Alaska Range and up along the Arctic coast. And then uh, rime icing, 4 to 14,000 feet there with that uh, system out over the Bering Sea, pushing slowly into the Atka area but staying west of the Pribilofs until probably tomorrow night. And for the jet stream, you can see the deep trough with that uh, low over the western Aleutians, western Bering Sea. Southerly is 85 to 100 knots coming into the central Aleutians from the south and southwest. And then ridging in advance of that system. So northwest, 65 to 80 knots there along the west coast and interior down across the Alaska Peninsula. Light winds, central eastern part of the state as well as the Panhandle and the Gulf of Alaska. 9,000 feet, uh, 55 to 65 knots southerly is there into the western Bering Sea ahead of the next storm, but light Variable winds over all of mainland Alaska, the eastern Bering Sea, Arctic coast, Panhandle, Gulf of Alaska, northeast maybe up to 20 there for Kodiak Island, especially on the east side of the island. And looking at 3,000 feet, westerly is 45 knots south side of that storm there coming across the western Aleutians, and then 45 to 60 knots there from the south over the western Bering Sea. Slowly edging eastward there, but uh, staying light over all of mainland Alaska. Easterly is maybe up to 20 knots there for the western Arctic coast. But light variable winds for the Panhandle, Gulf of Alaska, Kodiak Island, Southern Interior, Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula. And turbulence, uh, look for considerable moderate uh, chop moving eastward toward uh, Nikolsky during the late afternoon hours from the surface to 6,000 feet. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts.
Hello again, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And joining us again, talking about the augmented reality sandbox, is Eric Stevens from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska. And he's actually talking about a project from EPSCOR, which is the Experimental Program to Stimulate Competitive Research. A lot of acronyms, but some really mm -hmm. fun stuff today, right, Eric? You bet. We've got a learning tool that is a tool that's fun to use, uh -huh. and it really has a, a relevance to actually daily lives of anyone who goes outside uh -huh. and sees uh, lumpy topography in Alaska. We've got yes. a lot of mountains and such. You know, when I was younger and go on your first hike in the hills, say, yeah. you're given, maybe you're in the Boy Scouts, or, or you get at the kiosk at, a, at the trailhead, a topographic map, a flat piece of paper yes. with all these lines on it, bullseyes, uh, long lines that curve back mm -hmm. on themselves, say, perhaps things that look like this. Mm -hmm. Um, a, a quadrangle or a topographic map. We've got here just to illustrate a couple of examples near Denali. Alaska okay. has so much Perfect topography, example. so many mountains. Yeah. And what are all these lines that we see? It can be tough mm -hmm. to know what this means the oh, first yeah. time you look at it. What we've got, all these lines represent lines of where the, uh, the elevation of the topography goes through a certain level above sea level, say. Mm -hmm. that This line represents where the mountains have gone from below 1,000 feet mean sea level up through a thousand feet and above. That's your thousand foot contour. And when the mountain keeps going up, mm -hmm. you're up to 1,200 feet, 1,400 feet, and so on. And that's how you get this little bullseye around, uh, around the peak of a mountain. Kind of makes layered slices, right? Kind of like layered slices. Okay. Nice way yeah. to look yeah. at that. And when you see those, the lines are closer together, you're, you're going up more steeply. Okay. If the mountain rises more slowly, it takes you longer in horizontal space to go through those different vertical increments. So that is that, really hard to visualize. Right. We're, imagine you're looking at a 2D piece of paper, two-dimensional yeah. piece of paper, but you're trying to understand what the three-dimensional world looks yeah. like. Yeah. Well, enter you know, the augmented help. reality I like it. sandbox. Okay. Yes, what is that? Yeah. It is right here. We have the sandbox with us today, Sandbox 2.0, portable version. Sweet. Built up at University of Alaska Fairbanks. And we've got a couple of folks helping out today. Yeah, uh, let's see, Alana Velagi, and she's a uh, mechanical engineering student from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. If you want to give us a thumbs up there, Alana, thanks for helping us out today. And Courtney Brees, she's the outreach coordinator from EPSCOR, also helping us out today. Thanks, Courtney. And this tool here has a Microsoft Connect um, to sense the level of sand in this sandbox. Oh, wow. And then the yeah. Kinect feeds its information into a computer that then sends a signal to a projector okay. to draw the appropriate topographic lines on this topography. The fun thing about this, as we can see here, wow, that. is that the sandbox and its Kinect and its projector, they all work as a team. Hmm. So here we've got a mountain in the middle of the, of the uh, sandbox. What if we uh, took down the mountain to some degree Watch as the, uh, the software responds and redraws the topography. Mm, kind of a caldera forming there. There you go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what's fun about the sandbox, too, is it knows that uh, gravity flows downhill. Okay. And we've got some water that's actually down in the lowest elevations. And what's happening now is we're making it rain a little bit. We'll fill up rain oh, wow. into that uh, elevated lake bed, that caldera, as you uh -huh. said. And so now water is pooled up there. And if, what if you gouged out an outlet uh -oh. channel? Glacial dam release. There you go. The water flows out. What we're seeing here is a tool mm. that allows people to touch and connect, uh, Microsoft Connect, right. RRR, yeah. um, to connect two-dimensional topographic maps like what we have here, these flat things on a piece, wow. on a piece of paper, to the real three-dimensional world. I mm -hmm. think this sandbox, it's sandbox's real particular application as a learning tool to young people is what does a two-dimensional map mean when it's trying to represent the three-dimensional world? Right. This sandbox is kind of both at once. It's actually three-dimensional, uh -huh. a lumpy topography there, the sand, but it's got these lines drawn on the three-dimensional sand that would be on a two-dimensional right. piece right. of paper. Wow, that, I mean, that, that is a huge leap from the learning that we experienced when we were younger to how, mm -hmm. how children and even adults are visualizing in, in these new forms of technology it allows that to kind of reshape their thinking and visualize this in a, in a very useful and absolutely hands-on way. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's a hands-on tool. And it's hard for me to sit here and not go play with that. <laughs> well, that's what happened at GINA, um, up at the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, when the first model was being made, the prototype with right. plywood and such, we had professional adult 
<laughs> professor types had heard about this and they yeah. came by because they wanted to see how it worked. Okay. And, and everyone becomes uh, that idealistic, wonder-filled youngster. Sure. And, and you, you just can't help but play with that and to see how it reacts in time and, and um, right. it, it's a dynamic learning tool. And it Dynamic. responds. That's exactly. That's exactly mm -hmm. the word. Yeah. And you know, you wonder okay. what applicabilities beyond a teaching right. tool for Where topography it can it have? You can see how in Alaska we have inundation mapping as an okay. issue. If you had water coastal slosh, mm -hmm. slosh inland, say in a coastal flooding event right. on the western coast of Alaska or mm -hmm. the Arctic coast, you could see this. The concept is illustrated here um, as an introductory learning method. I think this is a potentially good outreach tool for all of us in Alaska. Okay, so not only just a topographical sense, a, a mapping sense, maybe something that leads into understanding of how geographic information systems work with GIS, but mm -hmm. also geology, if we wanted to get into kind of the formations and the bigger land masses and, and the representation of the 2D map, uh, we could go into hydrology, uh, which is uh, very important in Alaska, of course. Um, and even just understanding the weather sense, mounding up a big pile of sand could be that Arctic high pressure system sitting on top of Fairbanks and the voids mm -hmm. would be low pressure systems. This can go a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. Yes, wow. exactly. It's uh, not just landforms, but pressure has contours of high pressure and low pressure. And I wish I had had this kind of a learning tool no when I was taking kidding. Meteorology 101 back 25 years oh, ago. Wow. It would have been helpful, I think. Probably would have gotten a better grade. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for coming by, Eric and Alana and Courtney. Thank you so much for your help there in the sandbox. We are going to play in the sandbox a little bit more coming up tomorrow on our next edition of Alaska Weather Facts. We hope you join us for that. In the meantime, make sure you go to alaska.edu slash E-P-S-C-O-R. That's alaska.edu. EPSCOR to learn more information about what we're doing with this augmented reality sandbox around Alaska. We'll see you next time on Alaska Weather Facts. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at the sea ice analysis from March 25th, one month ago, you can see there was heavier pack ice down around St. Paul Island with some sea ice even down to St. George Island. And moving on to a month later, today, April 25th, you can see that's retreated northward considerably, just about gone in, is it, the ice is gone in Cook Inlet. Bristol Bay just about gone and really thinned out even over, over the northern Bering Sea and especially along the southwest coast on up into Norton Sound. That panel will continue with some southerly winds coming in but they'll turn easterly, so look for a little bit of a retreat to the north over the next several days, but nothing too significant. And for the coastal water forecast, northwest winds, 10 knots for the southeast uh, Panhandle Marine Zones, seas 2 to 5 feet for Tuesday. And that light wind pattern continues into Wednesday. Uh, west or north to northwest, uh, 10 knots for the coast, seas up to 6 feet, Stevens Passage, northwest at 10, and Clarence Strait, northwest 15, seas 3 feet. Prince William Sound, Cook Inlet, light variable winds for the day Tuesday with uh, slight seas and northwest winds 20 knots. Kamishak Bay across the Barren Islands, seas 4 to 5 feet there. And the North Gulf Coast, uh, variable winds to 10 knots with 4 foot seas. And again, light wind pattern continues into Wednesday here for the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, uh, variable winds at 10 knots, seas 2 to 3 feet. Kamishak Bay and the Barren Islands, southeast breezes of 15 knots with 3 to 4 foot seas. Basically a southerly breeze at 10 knots or Cook Inlet with seas running 2 to 3 feet. Kodiak Island, variable winds 10 to 15 knots with 3 to 4 foot seas. And variable winds uh, 5 to 15 knots for the Alaska Peninsula, seas possibly as high as 7 feet. Bristol Bay, light northwest breeze at 10 knots. And for the day Wednesday, Alaska Peninsula, southeast wind 20 knots, seas 5 to 7 feet, and variable winds 5 to 15 knots for Kodiak Island with 2 to 5 foot seas. Bristol Bay, southeast winds 15 knots. Fox Island, small craft advisories, uh, south to southeast winds 20 to 30 knots, seas 7 to 9 feet. Gale warnings for Adak and Atka, uh, especially in the afternoon, coming up to 35 knots from the south and southeast during the afternoon, seas building 9 to 12 feet. 40 knots south to southwest winds, uh, west of Adak to Shimia, and seas uh, 15 feet. And then for the day Wednesday, Shimia to Amchitka Island, southwest winds 30 knots, 15 foot seas. Small craft advisors for Adak and Atka, south to southwest winds at 25 knots. 
and 15 to 25 knot winds from the south and southwest for the Fox Islands. Southwest coast, east northeast, 10 to 15 knots tomorrow. Southeast 20 for the Pribilofs and southeast 15, St. Matthew Island. St. Lawrence Island, east winds at 20 knots, seas in the ice free waters to three feet. No change there for St. Lawrence Island on Wednesday. Otherwise, the southwest coast looking at east winds at 15 knots, four to five foot sea. Small craft advisories for the purple off southeast, 25 knot winds in the forecast. That winds will be northeast at 30 knots for St. Matthew Island with 10 foot seas. Otherwise, Norton Sound, pretty light northeast breeze at 10 knots with two foot seas. And for the central Arctic coast tomorrow, northeast winds 15 knots, eastern Boulevard Sea coast, west winds at 10, and then brisk wind advisories for the western Arctic coast for east winds at 25 knots, and then from Wales to Cape Thompson, north winds at 20 knots. And for the day Wednesday, Wales to Cape Thompson, northeast winds at 10 knots, but brisk wind advisories from Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort there in that uh, kind of a narrow area there at 25 knots from the east, east winds 20 knots, western Arctic coast. Otherwise, the central and eastern Boulevard Sea coast on Wednesday looking at easterlies at about 15 knots. And for tonight, look for some uh, clouds, fog, and flurries for the eastern Arctic coast. There are some moisture kind of works around an Arctic high up over the Arctic there and works in from the northeast. Otherwise, uh, variably cloudy to clear skies over the interior. Chance of uh, rain and snow showers over the mountainous terrain of the Alaska Range and possibly south central Alaska, but nothing significant. Dry for the North Gulf Coast, lingering showers of the Panhandle. Gale force winds, uh, western Aleutians pushing to the central Aleutians tomorrow. Front weakens, brings rains into Fox Islands late in the day. Unsettled eastern interior, mostly dry and clear over the western part of the state. And for Wednesday, that low pressure center weakens north of the western Aleutians. And the front weakens as well. Now push some rain into the Alaska Peninsula and Pribilofs and keep it unsettled over the remainder of the Aleutian chain with showers. And a better chance of clouds and showers now over the central interior areas, but amounts will be on the light side. Flurries continue for the Arctic coast, dry for the Panhandle. Thank you for joining us. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.